What's up guys, it's Ola here and today I'm actually going to bring you my Dragoon deck profile because if you guys watched my video about the September 2013 balance discussion you guys would know that all of my decks are dead besides this one. So I'm pretty much going to take this into a new format, probably it's going to be the only deck I use. I do want to build another one, I was really thinking about Gear Gears, but I do not want to get a Drago Sack and Big Guy for like $50, that's way too much. I mean unless I could trade for it, which um, there will be a trade binder video I think tomorrow or maybe the day after that, so yeah. um. That's pretty much it, um, and also, uh, I, I'll just actually, I'll ask during the video, but, um, yeah, guys, so let's just, uh, start off with the, um, deck profile, so, three ducks, obviously, it's three ducks, you have to run it, and this deck, you know, you can't live without it, it's pretty much it, you have to run three ducks, um, is it, if anybody has dual terminal versions of these, like, you should, like, contact me, maybe we can make a trade, or, uh, or I could buy it or something, um, but, yeah, then we have, uh, three phalanx, because I think, like, I, I, Pretty sure, like you have to run three. Like I've seen people run two, and I have no idea why they do so. Because I mean, two is just too little. Like you need to draw into it sometimes for that ravine pitch, or you know, cards of consonants. There's so many uses for it. And the sinking, obviously. So I like maybe it gets banished or something. So like I said, you need three. All right, next. This is kind of up for debate. Um, I run three mistletoe. I use three Mistleton because now the fact that Gold Sark is limited to one, I have to get this thing into my hand for combo pieces. It does clog sometimes, um, not really sometimes, it barely ever clogs for me, but when it does, it really does hurt. But still, it usually is really good, and even if I draw two with like a Ravine, I pitch for Phalanx, I summon, I summon, I go for a Tomb, and then I just go off with the play. So, I mean, it it's really not bad at all. So, um... Yeah, I usually, like, I, I like three. I think um, it lets you also be a little wasteful with the Missile Tins because sometimes when you don't have the best hand, you can just summon this with Phalanx, Sync for eight, and get, like, a Stardust out. Because if you have two, you don't like to waste them as much as they're essential for combo pieces if you want to go for the combo. But with three, you can be wasteful and safe. So I do like the whole safety measure, though, you know, like, you can waste these things as a, um, like, the whole wasteful measure of it. So I do like three. Um, it might be going down to two because whenever I duel, I usually side it during game two and three. Like, a, like I side one for game two and three, but I don't know. I do like three, and that's pretty much it. So, I mean, this could still come out. Like, I'm very, I'm very open to suggestions. This deck is still very much in testing. Then, since this now, since this format is slower and more grind based, I do do I do two legionnaire one Atlas. I would use two Atlas. Like that's actually what would probably go out for the uh, missile ten, the second Atlas. But I like the one because you, when you get it to graveyard, these legionnaires just pop everything, so it doesn't really matter. So I do like two and one. I think it's a great number, and you know you really need it for popping the Ophions or whatever else comes up in your way. Like it's just great for popping. And um, so yeah, that's pretty much. I just run a legionnaire and two Aquas. I mean two legionnaire and an Aquas. Whoops. All right, so next I have Zephyrus the Elite, Blackwing Zephyrus the Elite, because it's essential for combo pieces, especially with Hierarchy Dragon of a Tome and Red Eyes after Smell Dragon. You know, you bounce the Red Eyes, you summon it back against a Tome. Like it's, it's just essential for so many combo pieces. If you draw this in Ravine, you can make a decent play, and there's like a lot to do with it. So you know, this card, like honestly, if you just draw this card in Ravine, you can make a very decent play. I think it comes out with a Red Eyes. With zero attack and defense points, a higher two dragon of a tomb, and a starter dragon. So, you know, decent play. So, that's the uh, Zephyros. And now, this card is very tricky because I use one guru of the Wind Spirit. Now, you have to use it this format. Last format, you didn't have to use it because there was three gold sarks. But now, since you have only one gold sark you have to use it to banish the other tempest from the grave now i used to i used to use garuda last format as well just to make like crazy crazy combo plays um it's just like it was like a win more card but it was just fun sometimes it summons you that uh rank 4 xz that you might need but usually um like you didn't need it last format but now you actually need it which is why i was thinking of bumping it up to two but i don't know if i want to do that because it's just a lot of um banishing and wasting stuff so i'm not sure but you know banishing the tempest is very important to get your search off so i don't know but i do like one sometimes i'd like to have it when i don't have it but still i do like one garuda uh, this could also, like, the second one could also come out for the third missile tin, but I'm still not sure about that. Um, but yeah, like, uh, I use one, and I still like it. So, you know, if I, it really comes to be necessary, I will run a second. Um, 
Two Tempest, three is too much, especially now that you can't, you know, keep gold sarking these fuckers. So, um, I think two is perfect. When you draw it, you use the it's pitch effect. Like, with, when you when you have three, you just draw it too much. And then you have to keep pitching for its effect. And you have to, like, send something that you don't want to the grave unless it's a phalanx or an aquas. So, I really do think this card at two is very good. And that's pretty much it. There's really, like, it's just good at two. Three is too much. It clogs way too much. I tried because of this new whole format. I was freaking out of what it was going to do. I really hated Three Tempest. So, um, and then finally, the Red Arch Metal Dragon because it's Red Arch Metal Dragon. Also, if somebody has an Ultra one of these, like, please contact me because I really, I just really want to you know, bump up the rarity on this deck. So, yeah. Uh, next spells, I think that was 17 monsters, uh, I'm not sure, but spells, I think there's 16 of, if I'm not mistaken, um, and, you know, 6 Dragon Ravine, obviously. I mean, seriously, terraforming is so good in this deck, because, you end 3, because, look, if you use it, you get a Ravine, if you draw a dead when you have a Ravine on the field, you just use Ravine, and pitch the terraforming, and next thing you know, you're back where you started, so, you know, it's great. And that's pretty much it. This is the best card in the deck. It makes the deck good. So, yeah, um, I use, you know, three terraforming, three ravine. Uh, if somebody, if people have ultras, uh, supers of these, also contact me. I just want to bump up the rarities because, I, I don't know, like, since this is the only deck I'm going to be using this format, most likely, might as well bump up the rarities and stuff. Next, two cards of consonants because of the whole Atlas, uh, Atlas uh, Phalanx thing, like, whenever I'd search it with, I'd, like, if I ditch a Phalanx for Ravine, I mean, you know, ditch something and then pitch it to Grave right away, I could just add it to hand, use cards of constant judge your cards, it's just great, like, I think this card is great, that's pretty much it. I like drawing two cards, it gets you to some place that you, like, are really good. So, next we have, um... What do we have? Uh, two Forbidden Lands, since now that Heavy Storm is gone, I need protection for my monsters. Um... And, uh, you know, stuff like that. So, I do use two Forbidden Lands. Uh, very good for protection. Um, so, like, I've seen uh, Phoenix, Phoenix Flare. Uh, he's like the Dreamy guy who used uh, Dark Bribe instead of this. But I think I like the Lance better. Um, that's just my personal preference, though. So, that's Lance. Then we have two MST. I tried running three this format. It was god-awful. I always drew it. It was, like, when I didn't need it, um... It was always killing my hands. It was just really bad at three. So I did take one out because I did put in two lands anyway. And it was awful at three. That's pretty much it. It was just awful. So I like two lances and two uh, mystical space typhoon because those are good numbers. Now we have the one-ups. The gold sark, the book of moon, the foolish burial, and the dark hole. The dark hole might come out for anything else because this deck is like a swarming deck. So using dark hole on it is not good unless it's like really late game then maybe I can use a Dark Hole. But, you know, that's pretty much the one-up, so you need to use this for that one Tempest Search. Book of Moon's a great defensive card, Foolish Burial for your combos, especially pitching Phalanx and Zephyrus to Grave, and maybe even Atlas sometimes. And then finally you have the, uh... Shit, it's like you see my floor. Um, wait, shit, do you really... Oh, wow, okay. Anyways, and then you have the, uh... Uh, yeah, just, you know, and then the Dark Hole is just to destroy shit. So, now we're onto the traps. There's, I think, seven of them. This is, like, the holy trinity for traps now. And then, if you're on Torrential Tribute, obviously Torrential Tribute. But the thing with Torrential Tribute in this deck is that the fact that I swarm, and it kills my deck a lot. So, I use these three cards because they're really good. So, yeah, that's pretty much it. Two Mirror Force to, uh, punish overextension. Um, kind of, I mean, you don't need it, like, maybe I could take it out for something, because I'm not the biggest fan of the card, which is really funny, because back in my day, when I was little, this card was the shit, like, if you, like, if you had it, you were the shit, um, that Metal Raiders Ultra, <laughs> anyways, uh, so yeah, two Mirror Force, you know, like, that's pretty much it, just to punish over extension and, you know, power monsters and stuff, and then finally, I still use this card in this deck, because I think it's good, and that's to Breakthrough Skill. Breakthrough Skill is great because it's like an Effect Veiler and then I can use it again. Like against Evil Swarms, like I just use it and then banish it and then I can completely just keep going off. Um, I think it's a great card. It's also pitchable with Ravine and then it still has its great art effect live. So I really like that. So that's pretty much it. And yeah, that's why I like to use uh, Breakthrough Skill. It's a great card. So now... Um, Let's go for the extra deck. The extra deck, I run one Gators. This card is so 
good. This card is so good because basically sometimes to me it's better than a Vajrayana because it sends stuff to grave. Like if you draw a Tempest, you can pit, you can summon this thing, pitch the Tempest, get a Garuda, banish the Garuda, get a search, and just keep going and looping and looping and looping. It is so good. Um, uh, it's just it makes these like so many good plays. It could get your Garuda to hand or Zephyrus to hand, then to grave for combo plays, and it just like like. I didn't like this card that much in the beginning, but the better I got with this deck, the more use I've seen for it. And it just, I'm really starting to love this card so much. Like, I like it more than Vegiana at this point. I mean, obviously, Vegiana goes into all those plays, but this card has so much, um, like, toolbox potential. Like, just, like, very good tool to send stuff in Grave, and it's just really good. Like, this card is so good. And I really, like, regret the fact that, like, I actually, like, didn't like using it before. Um... But yeah, so kind of learned three Vajrayana. You need three. Like if people say you can you go with this deck without two, you really cannot. There have been duels where I wish I had four or five of them. There, it, like, you need three for all those combos, and especially now with no pot of avarice and recycling, you really need three. Like that's pretty much it. You need three Vajrayana. I, I really can't stress that enough. Um, next for level eight synchros, I have two Stardust. I like two Stardust because what the. Yeah, we're kind of like out of focus. No. Come on, stupid. There it is. No, what the hell? There you go. Okay, that was bad. Sorry, but yeah, we're out of focus. So basically, with the um, the two Stardust, uh, it, it's great because it's a wind target. Um, although, I mean, Tempest, you need wind or dragon. But still, it's a great wind or dragon target. But also, um, whenever just... Since people are running deep prison a lot this format... People are going to want this thing gone with Deep Prison. So then that's when you go into your second one. Like, Two Stardust is just really good just to give you that safety. Sometimes I'm even forced to banish this thing for a Red Eyes when I draw it. And then I just bring out another one. Like, it's this card. Like, Two Stardust is just really good in my opinion. And I like it a lot. Wow, that was a bad burp. Um, next we have Scrap Dragon, obviously. Then we have Thought Ruler, which I... This is my favorite level 8 Synchro. There's just been so many times where it saved my ass. I went to Locals two weeks ago. This was still under the old format. Um, I, I think top... Uh, yeah, no, I think. I know I top 8 with this deck. And then in top 8, I lost to Mermels. But now, in the game 2 of Mermels, I had an awful draw. And basically, what I had to do is I had to, like, over... Like, ex not overextend. I had to minus myself so much just to summon our Red Eyes with full power and banish a Tempest. Um, I didn't even get the search off with Tempest because I had to summon it that turn, and I, I think I took away my Missile Tin and like a Ducks or a Phalanx or whatever. It was honestly really bad. But what happens because I just kept poking with the Red Eyes, then I was able to summon a Thought Ruler, and he just could not get over it. He was not able to get over it. He even Creature Swap my Thought Ruler, and then I killed it with Red Eyes, and I used my Monster Reborn in hand. And he just scooped there because he could not have done anything. It's that good. And then in Gear Gear, as we went into time, this was actually one of the best duels I had in my life. I was facing this Gear Gear guy. Uh, we went into time. I summoned this thing. And, like, it's not the fact that I, I, I summoned it to get more life points. But next turn, he actually just could not get anything to get over this thing card. Like, everything targeted. And he just could not do anything to it. So this card is amazing. Like, I love this card so much. Like, I really do think um, it's my favorite little late single. That's pretty much it. And then, the last but not least, you got into Crimson Blader, because Crimson Blader you have to use, especially with all those fake Tal Taladad decks that are starting to come out, all those Light Swords and Twilight decks, Plasma decks, all of that shit. Really good card. For level 5 Synchro, I use Armides instead of Cataster, because Cataster does not take care of Evil Swarm, and Evil Swarm is a huge problem for my deck. It is, because due to the fact that, um... Uh, you know, like, Ophion like, prevents me from special summoning and going off. But, I mean, I know this thing doesn't get over Ophion. It's just at 2,300 attack points. But it's still a really good card. Because if they don't have Ophion on the field and they have, like, four backer like they usually do, um, I just attack and they can't do shit. Like, that's pretty much it. Like, it's just a good, like, lockdown card against Evil Swarms and other cards that use hand traps like from Monarchs and stuff. It just it stops everything in the battle phase and I really like that, like, possibility. So I do use this card because I do really like it. Um, it still might come out for a Librarian or a Cataster, I don't know, but I do like that card. Alright, so for the XC Monsters... A tomb, he's essential for your plays, um, and the combos, that's pretty much it. You banish it for red eyes, all that stuff, it's really good. Strike Bouncers are very good, good rank 6 uh, XZ, you know, stop effects. Like, if you get this Stardust and red eyes with full power out, you usually win. Like, that. I love making that play, because then you just win. Um, Alright, then, this card pretty much changed how Dragoonities play. Not really changed, but it really helped them, because... 
Because sub Ptolemyum 7, uh, I know it's limited to one, but I only need one. And the fact is that this, it, th this card helped the deck so much. Because uh, it just keeps bouncing shit. Like, if you bounce a Mistleton and Grave to hand, you just summon it and keep looping. And it's just great in that retrospect. It really makes a couple... It made, like, two new combos. It's so good. Like, I really do think this card is great. Um, Like, I just felt like... I've like I found out one loop, then I actually discovered another loop with Gators. Like, it it's just it, it's a really good card. Um, like this really did change the, like the outlook of Unities a bit. Um, and then for the last two, uh, Guy Charger to get over the Atom. You know when it uses its effect, and then for damage. And finally, I used for my rank four Ice B Zero Fine. This is going to be a Dagusto Emerald because you need Dagusto Emerald in this deck to keep recycling. So I'm actually gonna have to like learn how to summon. Right, level fours, and you know, summon Garuda or Zephros, you know, Xe into Emerald, shit like that. This is gonna make Dagusto Emerald. I mean, this card did help in my uh, locals two weeks ago. Um, the guy had uh, fucking like two Hyperion and a uh, in a row decree on field, and I just summoned Zero Fine, and then just negated everything and proceeded just poke to win. It was great. So um, that's pretty much it, though. So um, that's the deck. Uh, I really hope you guys enjoyed this deck profile. I'm um, sorry for like studying and stuff like that, but I all but this is also like I'm gonna give you a list, show, show you a couple of cards that I'm also thinking of using in this deck, like the second Garuda and the Baby Rock for the Gators plays, then Black and White Wave. It's a really good card because if you have an XZ monster with Synchro monsters as a material, you can banish one card in the field and draw a card. It's just the fact that I would have totally used this last format, but the thing about this, uh, the thing about this format is that this deck is now not as fast. And I don't get those plays off. Um, I don't get those XZs off as much as I'd like. Uh, as I'd like to, like this deck is still really fast, but it's just the fact that I don't get those XZs as much as I'd like to. And then also um, these three cards I maybe could use. Like this could replace the Breaker Scale, then this maybe the Dark Hole or something. But I'm still not sure. But that's just like stuff that I'm just like considering using. And yeah, so I that's pretty much the deck profile, guys. Um, give me suggestions, like those cards that I just showed you at the end, you know, give me suggestions of what to do with them or if I should do anything with them at all. Um, you know, give me suggestions of what I could do with the deck, what I can do to improve. Uh, also, like, if you can bump up the rarities for my ducks, my red eyes, and the terraforming, that'd be really appreciated. And yeah, guys, I really hope you guys enjoyed this deck profile. Rate, comment, subscribe, and I will see you all later.